So one of the few things I thought I'd be saying so soon after coming out of pandemic is to say that there's a restaurant opening in Santon. I mean, it's not one of the things that we've been talking about at all for the last couple of months. I mean, most of it has been doom and gloom, but there is a new restaurant opening and it looks quite intriguing. Uh, it's got an Asian flair, but I'm not going to give it all away. I've got uh, Nikki von der Volt on the line. He's the man behind uh, this new venture. Nikki, tell us a little bit more about Tang. Well, Tang's a long time in the making, um, and as you say, it's good news with all the doom and gloom around, especially, I mean, I'm a hospitalitarian, I love hospitality, so, you know, my heart breaks for all the guys that are to suffer, and hopefully this plays a way for, you know, for, for new openings, you know, drawn a line in the sand, saying that, you know, there, there will be a recovery, and so as I said, yeah, two years in the making, um, inspired by, you know, I've, I've eaten all over the world, uh, places like Hakkasan, Zuma, obviously we know Nobu from here. And, you know, I've taken sort of the best of Japanese izakaya, which focuses on robata style charcoal cooking and blended that with classical Cantonese dishes. So we're not fusion in terms of we've taken Japanese dishes and fused it together with Chinese dishes. They stand alone. There are one or two Korean dishes, but yeah, it's a... It's very exciting and we've got an amazing site. It's the Old Wang Thai site on the square. The Old Wang Thai, so yeah, about a year and a half ago, I was working on another project and I sort of, it was, which was in Rosebank and I knew that this site was potentially gonna come available. And a site like this, you don't often get, you know, you grab it with both hands. And I started focusing. So right before President Ramaphosa announced the lockdown, I actually put my offer in here and obviously level five, you know, everything that was going on, you know, thought it was the end of the world. And I kept on pushing and I realized that if there's going to be a recovery, uh, which we all know there will be, I think Santon being, yes. you know, in the richest square mile in Africa, that's where you'll have your recovery. And, you know, I just love the sites. We've opened up beautifully, uh, we've raised the ceilings, you know, we, the site in 23 years hasn't had a proper uh, refurb. So what I thought was going to be ba basically a small refurb, uh, keep the bones. We basically gutted the whole thing. I've rewired everything. We've redone the plumbing. You know, it's a brand, brand new, brand new shop. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a bold commitment at this time, as you've mentioned, uh, you know, it's, you signed up just before the lockdown, then all of this happened. We all thought the world was going to end. And uh, I mean, it's quite a glimmer of hope uh, to look forward into hopefully what is a, a great recovery. You mentioned it's a fantastic spot. It overlooks the square and uh, very popular with overseas visitors as well. Uh, Nikki, what is uh, what, what is the philosophy sort of also behind the brand and the whole look and feel? You've gone for like a very minimalist, obviously very Asian influenced kind of look. I mean, when I started, I mean, I think, you know, Tristan and I, you know, I sort of, I wanted to push the envelope slightly. I mean, if I, I spoke about Hakkasan, I'm not sure if you know Hakkasan, it was designed by Kristen Diagre. I mean, it's very, you know, it's got, you've got your lattice work and it's very Asian. And I didn't want that. I wanted something, you know, my brief to Tristan was modern tropical and nothing overtly Asian. Uh, so, you know, I could have, you know, try to come up with a name for it. Zen, Zen luxury, minimalism, call it what you want, but it's, you know, we chose four elements. And if you look at our logo, you know, we've got four elements in there and I try to keep it as simple as possible using, you know, we've got amazing timber, we've got amazing granite, a lot of marble. Um, and the feeling that I wanted to create was an escape. You know, the feeling was you arriving at a six star Balinese or Asian resort. So from the moment you arrive, I wanted to create this, you know, for that two or three hours that you're with us, you're not in Santon, you're not in, in Joburg, you, you're somewhere else. And we're going to treat and pamper you the same way. And that, you know, the whole philosophy behind, you know, what I believe in hospitality is accessible luxury. So we've, we, you know, we've gone out of our way. It's a, it's a, it's a big ticket uh, shop, uh, big ticket items in there. But there's something for everybody. Somewhere you can come to. The philosophy also is like, I don't want to create a special occasion restaurant. You know, the sites and the location lends itself to where we, as you mentioned, we've got international travelers, but you've got local office workers, you've got people within the community that come here. And you don't have to blow the budget every time you come, but you can blow the budget. So you can have, you can come and have a miso soup for, I don't know, 80 bucks or something like that. You can have dim sum, you can have sushi, you can have a steak, you can have, you know, we, there's a whole full scale of it. And then somewhere else, you know, you can go to three, four times a week if you want to. And um, yeah, you can, you can play it up. You know, you, you're a cast member in our movie. 
Tell me a little bit more about, uh, obviously, this project. I mean, it's not like you mentioned, it's not your first time, uh, it's not your first rodeo in the hospitality space. Uh, is this one of the toughest projects you've had to uh, deal with, uh, just purely also based uh, on the uncertainty of where things are going? To be honest with you, this is probably a tenth the size of my last project, which was extremely, extremely difficult. So, no, it's not the biggest one. And it actually, truly, to, to be honest, it also hasn't been the most difficult one to raise money for. I mean, obviously, your own finance is in there. And you would think, I, I, I said this to someone the other day, raising finance for a restaurant during COVID, and I mean, I managed to do that in level four and level three, is like trying to finance a plane without wings. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. It speaks to the it speaks to the quality of the sites, uh, the concept that we've put forward because there is no high end Asian, uh, I don't know how in Gauteng, South Africa for that matter, done to this spec. Um, yeah, I think you know for me the difficult thing, you know, the uncertainty, you know, surrounding when the opening date was or not, and we sort of pegged it uh, mid April after Easter. That's what we're working towards. You know, but, but I've got patient capital behind me. I'm, you know, I've got my own expectations in terms of, 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 of returns, but this is not a purely only about returns. I mean, you know, the philosophy behind this is other than launching Tang, I'm launching my hospitality management company, Miramar Collection. And under, under Miramar Collection, we want to do hospitality projects, whether that be restaurants, bars, hotels. We bring out, I'm bringing out a rosé wine. So, you know, the, the philosophy, the, the top philosophy of Miramar Collection is accessible luxury across the board, you know, and we will only look at landmark iconic sites and or projects. Well, it sounds like it's uh, only just begun. I think there's still quite a bit for us to chat about uh, as the year unfolds. You've mentioned the timeline being sort of towards the, the end of, or towards uh, April, so after Easter. Uh, in terms of the offering, will it be lunch and dinner or will it only be dinner to start with? No, 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 definitely lunch and dinner. Uh, we'll be trading run clothes in between. It'll be full service up until closing. Hopefully that you know, the, the, locked, uh, the the curfew would have been eased up a little bit, but I mean, we can live with it at 11 o'clock. Um, we're very fortunate. We've partnered with Muet and Chandon. So we're doing a champagne bar that spills out onto the square. So lunch, dinner, you can pop in for a drink. And the whole izikaya concept, Japanese izikaya concept, uh, it, you know, is as much emphasis on food as it is on drink. So having said that, you know, we'll encourage patrons to come and have a cocktail at the bar. We've got a signature uh, uh, bar cocktail list that our barman, who until recently worked at Gaia uh, in Dubai, which is also one of the, I think we voted the third best restaurant in Dubai. So he brings an incredible wealth of knowledge to the thing. So wonderful cocktails. We're going to have an incredible wine cellar, wine lists. Yeah, I mean, it sounds it sounds remarkable. I mean, I'm I'm trying to still imagine the sort of resort in the middle of Santon that you can kind of take in for the hour or two or three that you're going to be there for dinner. Nikki, you used to be very much Cape Town based, um, but does this also mark a, a move to Johannesburg for you uh, to be permanently well, based out of Johannesburg or Santon? To be honest, I'm a Joburg boy, born and bred. I was uh, born in Bedford View. I spent 35 years here, and then I moved down to Cape Town in 2016 with my family to go work on. Uh, a hotel project there, which didn't go exactly the way we wanted to. Um, and I was scratching around looking for, for another project. And, you know, if, I give credit to Gary Kiriachi and David Higgs. You know, at that same time, they were opening Marble and, you know, the scale of what they were doing. And, you know, I said, you know, my return back into, I've always been in hospitality, but my return back into the restaurant space, I said, now the timing is right now for Johannesburg. You know, people want to see world-class offerings and stuff like that. And that prompted, I looked at my wife and I said, listen, what do I want to do what I want to create? I can't sustain in Cape Town. Cape Town, I'm not saying, you know, you, you get some, some busy stores there, but it is seasonal. And I saw that seasonality and the effect it has on your, on your, on your cash flow firsthand. Whereas Jobek has got an 11 and a half month uh, season, if you want to call it that. And the spend per head is, yeah. And to be honest with you, you know, Santon Times being a Gauteng, but I love, I love Gauteng. I love Jobek people. I'm not saying I don't like Cape Town people. But the, we've got a certain warmth about people in Gauteng, which I love, and I'm very happy to be back here. Well, welcome back, and uh, it's good to have you uh, sitting up in Santon, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this uh, unfolds and uh, to the you know the big opening week here after Easter. Fingers crossed, all goes as planned, and uh, to see what you're going to be uh, spreading out on on the tables at Tang. 
and that's uh, Nicky van der Valt, the man behind uh, Tang. So if you've seen the uh, the logo and the banner uh, up at uh, Nelson Mandela Square, just right next to the Nelson Beautiful. Mandela statue, you, you you'll see it there, and uh, at least you know what what it's all about. So Nicky, thank you so much for making the time to chat to us. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you.